<laughs> I still remember that time. I can't resist telling some of these stories. We were having a very hard time trying to get a, a president for the next year. This was a few years ago. And there was one lady, she's a very, very good person. Uh, she was running our Armadale meditation group at the time, Rachel. And I asked her, I said, look, it'd be wonderful if you could be our president next year. Said, oh, I'm not too busy. Is this too much other work I have to do? I can't afford the time. So I had to change my tack. Be careful around me because, you know, I sort of uh, teach psychologists. And I can be very sneaky at times, or for good cause. And so I told her, I said, well, actually, yes, you know, just... Being a woman, it's probably not very good being a president of our Buddhist society. <laughs> she took the bait. What was he talking about? I can be president if I want to. <laughs> so she, she signed the forms. I mean, she became our president, a very good president too. <laughs> so be careful about the sneaky things which Ajahn Bab gets up to. But it's all for a good cause anyway. And she, I, I admitted it afterwards and she said, oh yeah, okay, fair enough. But anyway, <laughs> she was a very good president, did a lot of good karma. It's wonderful. So anyway, so now is the time for some meditation. So if you'd like to close your eyes. <coughs> and with your eyes closed, just bring all the attention inside. And inside, I don't just mean inside your body. I mean inside this moment. Because we live in so many different places. In so many different times. We extend our awareness all over the place. Now you imagine being in it all home again. Being everything inside. Inside this moment, inside this body. may take a while, but after many times meditating, you realize that this home inside you, inside this moment, is such a pleasant place to be. Now we all sort of have our little home somewhere, or apartment, or just a room somewhere where we live. We go out into the world to serve, to, you know, to make enough money to live, uh, to do our duties to our family and our loved ones. and We go out there into the world. It's wonderful to have a place to come home to. I don't mean your room, in your house. I don't mean your favorite bed or your meditation cushion. I mean inside your body, inside this moment, inside now. What Ajahn Chah used to call the real home. And in home, you don't have to work. You don't have to live up to any person's commands or expectations. A place called home is a place of love, by which I mean you're accepted for who you are. So have that place of acceptance of who you are inside you right now. That's a wonderful place to start meditating. But I have to check my body because if it is sore or aching, it causes me trouble. So first of all, I'm aware of my legs. My legs, even though I said my, I don't own them. They're my friend. And I mean that seriously. I ask them what they need. The feet, ankles, calves, knees, thighs. Are you comfortable, really comfortable? If you're not, I will move you, adjust you, scratch you, whatever. What do you need? It's called real care. I've learned how to be aware of my legs and all the feeling sensations there. I've learned how to care for them. 
which means that when I look at my legs, I know how to relax them very deeply, to adjust, or just to feel part of those legs, to zoom in on them and relax everything there. By relaxing, I mean not pulling anything, not squashing anything, letting everything be loose. I know that sensation of ease and looseness, and nothing is tight. And if there is any injury there, it allows the looseness, the openness, allows the energies of the body to go to that very place and do its healing. Many times, myself, meditators as well, they tell me that they get hot spots in their body when they're doing this. The hot spots is a sign that the body's own energies are focusing in that place to do its healing. People always feel so comfortable afterwards. Anyway, let go through my legs, then to my bottom, my butt. It's on a, a cushion. It's been pretty good today. I can feel that the Bottom is pretty comfortable on top of the, the Safu. If it wasn't, I would adjust. And go up my back. Well, this, this works for me. It may not work for you, but it's worth a try. Just stretching the back. Mm. And then once it's nicely stretched, it feels good. Stretching the back. And then just let go. Let the back decide where it wants to go. And my back just relaxes really deeply. Feels good. I check it with my mindfulness. My awareness is just on the feelings in the back. I know, just this is pretty good. And I can maintain this position for a long time. Some of you would prefer to lean against the back rest of a chair or against the wall. That's fine. You find out what your back wants, not what you feel it should be doing. And then I go to the front of my body. All these organs in there, the engine room of your body, the torso. And then I make sure, so I sweep up through my body. I don't need to know the names of all these uh, organs and sub-organs and sub-sub-organs or whatever. I just feel. Feel the sensations in the body. Everything is pretty good. nice and loose. If there's any place there which is a bit tight. Interesting that I feel a bit of tightness around my the breast area of me. I haven't got a clue why, but I'm going to stop there and just focus and just relax those parts of my body. To relax them, you try this, you try that, and attitudes, not physical stuff, until you feel that that part of your body is easing, is opening up, that whatever was stretched or tight or squashed or blocked opens. And trial and error takes time at first, but you soon learn. Your mind and body is very clever. As soon as it learns how to relax itself, you know it's working because you can feel it. That part of my body now is really at ease. It's comfortable. And so you move upwards. 
And of course, you don't have to follow exactly what I say, but it's an example of how you relax your body very deeply and how you manage to give some healing, some healing, sorry, to your body. Uh, reach my shoulders. Shoulders feel good today. Nevertheless, I just make sure that everything is relaxed. I'm not pulling those shoulder muscles apart, I'm not stretching them. Everything is nice and loose, free, easy. You can feel that. I go down my shoulders to my arms. Similar, just allowing the mindfulness to do like a check, sweep through to make sure everything is fine. Till I get to my hands. And I just ask my hands and fingers, are you happy there? My, my fingers reply to me today, yes, they're very happy. And I check that <coughs> posture. The posture of my hands, I don't think, is in any, in any book. It's not what some control freak teaches so it's the right posture, but it feels good. I'll always trust my feelings. Trust what my hands say and what some expert says. I'm going to leave my fingers and hands exactly as they are. Then I move back to my neck. I always do this, I just almost like a habit. I move my head at this point, backwards and forwards, forwards and back, to the sides. And make sure that I get my head well balanced on top of the neck. If I do have any irritations in my throat, which I do get because I have a couple of hay fever allergies, I just focus on that. Don't try and get rid of it, but try and make peace with it. I found if you try and get rid of any irritation or ache or pain or wound, you end up overreacting and it makes, makes it worse. You're kind to it, opening the door of your heart to that irritation. The irritation tends to get relieved. And then I move up to my facial muscles. The position of those muscles will tell any person who looks at your face about your emotional world inside, whether you're angry, excited, in love, at peace, those emotions are written on the face in the figure of the muscles. So I decided to experience the muscles around my eyes, my nose, my mouth, maybe my forehead. I can feel them and I just relax them all. Loosening the muscles around the eyes and the mouth. I do this every time so it doesn't really take me that long. Not only does it make my face feel at ease, but it also just relaxes, relieves any emotions inside my mind. And the face is relaxed. My mind is pretty relaxed too. And I feel my whole body. Just joining everything together, just sitting here, put my legs to my head. Now if there's anything in there which still needs some adjustment, I will do it. But my body is pretty comfortable now. And I keep on relaxing it until I experience and feel 
what I call the delight of relaxation. Feeling that to relax the body is a, is a beautiful, soft, subtle form of pleasure. My body feels good, and here it comes. There's a word in Pali, Piti Sukha, for those scholars of Buddhism. That's what you feel when you relax the body. Joy. But also I noticed for years that when I learn to perceive the joy, the delight of relaxation, the body relaxes even deeper. which means I relax deeper. And because I enjoy this, my mind doesn't want to wander anywhere. It doesn't want to think about anything. It's enjoying. Beautiful relaxation. Like you're being massaged. Or you're lying in a, in a hot tub. It's enjoying the pleasure the joy of the body being at ease. And I stay there for a while. It is important to recognize the joy of meditation. It means your meditation goes deeper. And it's also you like meditating. Can you feel the joy of having a body which is really more at ease than probably the whole day? And then when it's the time, I let go of the body and go inside, inside my mind. And to do that, it's just one skillful means amongst others is actually to look at my peaceometer. How peaceful am I right now? Number from one to ten. One, really peaceful. Ten, agitated. When I see how peaceful or unpeaceful I am, I can also see that change. Something makes me disturbed. Something calms me down. What? It's an important insight to understand. The cause of peace. You always find that letting go causes peace. And letting go is, first of all, just letting go of the past and the future. Yeah, I know that many times we're just caught up in time, worrying about what happened today, this morning, earlier on, concerned with what's going to happen next. You find you don't have to be. No one forces you. You learn so much more from the present moment and you will ever learn from the past. And now is where your future is made. Then this present moment, you find your future goes much better than you expected. And you'll find, as your mind starts to calm down, as you start to experience peace, stillness, with it comes silence. You notice there aren't so many thoughts 
as usual in your mind. And there's often gaps between those thoughts, spaces of silence. You don't have to think. You don't have to work it out. You feel truth. The reality of peace before the words come in to disturb it. The silence. And soon, many people, especially, this is what happens to me, I just become aware of my breathing, just naturally. It's the only thing which is left moving. I watch my breath like I would watch waves on the ocean by the beach on a very calm day. Gentle ripples of water coming up the beach towards me. That's the air coming in and then falling away again. Not just being with the waves. This time of air coming in and out of your body. Peaceful. Delightful. Enjoy this. I'm going to be quiet for a couple of minutes. When I start speaking again, it'll be close to the end of the meditation.
it's getting close to the end of the meditation now. How do you feel? What is peace like as an experience? Just be in peace. Enjoy it. Without trying to mention its name. Especially from the joy of peace, by the mind tingling with the pleasure of stillness. How does your body feel? Is actually just moving out from inside, gradually to outside, with the body. How relaxed is it and at ease? In a few moments, I'll be ringing the gong. Usually ring that gong three times. I have to open my eyes to make sure I get it in the right place. But please, you keep your eyes closed until the third ringing of the gong starts to vanish. And then you open your eyes. Very good. You know, it's like, because I wasn't here last weekend, I was doing Zoom retreats and stuff. But when I hear that, close your eyes, I close my eyes at the beginning of the meditation, I open my eyes at the end of the meditation, all these people have come. It's like mir miracle. <laughs> There's only half as many people beforehand. That's wonderful.